Good morning, I'm Abigail Aranzana and today I'm going to discuss uh, about uh, Good morning, I'm Abigail Aranzana and today I'm going to talk about uh, Science High School in the Philippines. So I have chosen Central Visayan Institute Foundation of Hagna Bohol, Philippines. Um, because many science high schools in Manila, like Quezon City and the Philippine Science High School are really well known. But this one is the first time I've heard of this school and I think it might be the first for you even. So Central Visayan Institute Foundation. So today our discussion points are Okay, so we'll talk about history. Oops, right. Let's talk about history, the vision and mission of a school, their learning system, and their research center, notable people, and admissions. How you can get into that science high school. Okay, so history. In 1925, uh, it's like a few years after the American teachers or called the Thomasites arrived in the Philippines. Uh, Fred Warner, an American educator, uh, saw the need for a quality education in Hagna Bohol. Many, um, many, many students, many natives are flocking to Tagbilaran to study. So in Central Visayas, in Bohol, so Tagbilaran is the capital and Hagna is another uh, part of Bohol. So many, many, so as I was saying, many, many students are flocking over to Tagbilaran and uh, many still need uh, quality education. So Fred Warner saw that need and uh, put up a school in 1925. So that school was called the Filipino American High School, uh, but was later on changed to Central Visayan, in Visayan Institute uh, in 1983 or 1984, 93, 1983 to 1984. So what's the vision and mission of the school? So the vision of the school is to serve as haven of learning and formation for the youth, protecting and developing what is good in the Filipino while learning from experiences of the global community. Graduates shall be achievers ready to serve their country and the greater family of nations, guided by our Heavenly Father. So uh, it's preserving and developing uh, Filipino knowledge and at the same time applying globalization, uh, the global education so uh, their approach to education is a mixture, is a hybrid of traditional education and um, modern education. So their mission, forming the educational arm of the Central Design Institute Foundation, the junior and senior high school departments first shall equip each student with necessary values and competencies for further studies and careers. Uh, they shall develop and protect each individual's talent and innate creativity and guide each one towards the path of fullest realization of potential and creative abilities. And lastly, shall instill in the youth a spirit of service to country and love of God above all. So we see here their vision to uh, really uh, equip their students to make students the leaders of uh, tomorrow that uh, citizens of the future that will make a change. So uh, I was really uh, intrigued by their learning system. So they have this innovative learning system which they call DLP or dynamic learning program. Uh, so it's an independent learning. So they have uh, this, uh, they have three sections, the rotating sections that for example section 1a 1b 1c so 
in the first uh, uh, section, uh, there will be a teacher, a teacher who will introduce the subject or the course they they uh, they will be learning. And the second part is um, uh, each student doing their own thing and like a self discovery in the process and like finding out and learning by themselves, self study. And uh, the th uh, third one is like a mixture of both and also discussion and um, brainstorming uh, and the concepts of the subject. So, but usually they have no introductory lecture and students learn with zero to minimal teacher intervention. It's individualized, as I said, and valida validated by new results from neuroscience researches. So uh, they're pandemic ready, even before the pandemic happened. So handwriting is used as a subject-centered strategy to pin down focus and attention. So they discourage, not really discourage, they encourage rather, uh, handwriting in most of uh, the studies and uh, presentations of the students. So it's mano mano talaga. Bira lang sila gumamit ng technology, which is also a good thing because not everyone is privileged with uh, advanced technology. And they also have this interesting zero homework policy uh, because they believe that as. Uh, the students learn for from 7.30 to 5 p.m. That's their usual schedule. And they think that if a student uh, studies or uh, work more than that, it will it, it, is, it is no longer healthy and it would uh, be harmful to their mental health and uh, amongst other things. So their zero homework policy is applied and but they're not hindering students to know you can't study after 5 p.m. You can study, but at your own will. It is not imposed. And uh, they have, they take pride in their theoretical physics research. So aside from curriculum development and book writing projects, the current research interest is the mathematical modeling of neuronal processes and their implications in the cognitive sciences. So they're really in interested not just uh, in education, but a further education and developing science. So the school takes pride in its research center for theoretical physics, RCTP, established in 1992. So which organizes small international workshops to foster the informal but intense exchange of ideas and perspectives on outstanding problems in physics and mathematics. So they're quite brainy people. <laughs> and so uh, let's see uh, some uh, notable people here. So a uh, verse in the Bible said that by their fruits you shall know them. So they have a good product. Their school had good products. So they have so far quite notable people. Uh, the first one is Dr. Jose Abueva. He was a former president of the University of the Philippines. University of Philippines is the top one uh, university of the Philippines, academic institution of the Philippines. And that's a, a, a big uh, responsibility. And Bernardo Salas, the former justice of the Court of Appeals. Attorney Victor Nituda, former commissioner of immigration and board top notchers, first placers in civil engineering. And if I'm not mistaken, he also has a book about Marcus, which also made him quite popular. And we also have Elpidio and Constantina Casenia, brother and sister among other board top notchers. So we have re here uh, students, now citizens, and who made impact in the Philippines and so how do one get in so how can you get in if you ask me um, if they before they have a, a lower grade levels but now they focus on grade 7 to 11 so middle school uh, uh, junior and senior high school 
So if you're incoming grade seven, the usual, uh, the usual uh, admission processes and requirements are needed. And uh, if you're a transferee, these are the things that you need. But when you are in grade eight to 10, you must have an average of 90% up for the preceding school year. So if you really want to get in and continue in this school, you must maintain an average grade of 90%. That means you really have to study hard or must enjoy learning. And uh, for grade 11, aver you must have an average of 87% up in their grade 10 report card. So they are quite strict in this. And uh, this is a science high school, so not everybody can really get in. So I hope uh, you're somehow uh, interested and uh, and might think about going in there or you might endorse it to some of uh, the people that you know, to your family and relatives or your friends who are in Bohol. Uh, so this is a great school to go to. So thank you for listening and that's all for today.